children, it's Mrs Clark here with one of my favourite stories, Crummy Mummy and Me by Anne Fine. Now today I'm going to tell you about a little girl called Nina who is really sensible and responsible and her not so responsible mum. Hope you enjoy it. Now uh, this is a picture of Nina the little girl in our story. I don't think my mum's fit to be a parent. Really, I don't. Every morning it's the same. Every single morning. I'm standing by the front door with my coat on, ready to go. School starts at nine and it's already 8.40 or even later. And she's not ready. She's not even nearly ready. Sometimes she isn't even dressed. Come on, I shout up the stairs. We have to leave now. Hang on a minute. What are you doing up there? Her voice comes all muffled through the bedroom door. Nothing. You must be doing something, I yell. Come down then, we're waiting. Can't find my shoes. I lean against the front door sighing. <sighs> With as much patience as I can muster, I call upstairs. Where did you take them off? I thought I took them off in the bathroom. Look there then. I have. If you would only put your shoes away neatly night we wouldn't have to go through this every single morning by now of course my baby sister's fretting she's strapped inside her pushchair and since i put her coat and bonnet on at least 10 minutes ago and she's still indoors her head and ears are getting hot and scratchy she's boiling up into one of her little rages already she's trying to tug her bonnet off Will you come on? I shout upstairs. I'm really getting mad now. I'm coming, I'm coming. Well, hurry up. At last she comes downstairs. And even then, she's never dressed right. You'd think, honestly you would, that we didn't have any windows upstairs the way Mom chooses what to wear. She certainly can't bother to look through them at the weather. She'll sail down in midwinter when it's snowing in a thin cotton frock with short puffy sleeves and no woolly. I have to be firm. You can't come out like that. Why not? You just can't, I tell her. You'll catch your death. It's snowing out there. It's far too cold for bare arms. You'll freeze put a coat on but I just stare at her until she goes back upstairs for a sweater and even then she'll choose something quite unsuitable she'd wear a glittery leg warmers to a funeral if I let her or if we ever went to funerals she'd sit on a beach in her thick purple poncho if she were called in to see the headmaster she'd rather wear those baggy flowery shorts she found abandoned on a park bench last Easter than anything sensible. She'd look fantastic. She always does. But not at all like a mother. You have to watch her. You can't let up. At least she admits it. I'm a terrible embarrassment to you, Mina, she confesses, buckling on two of her Best studied belts. I'm a crummy mummy. Then I feel mean for being so stern. You're not a crummy mummy, I tell her. You do your best. And I suppose it doesn't really matter what you look like. I hope you enjoyed that introduction to crummy mummy and me. Next time I tell you a little bit more about Nina and her family. Bye.